Hey everybody, it's Ben here and today I want to show you how I installed this Elejoy vehicle to home split phase inverter along with the generator input box and the circuit breaker interlock. The first step is to install the four mounting tabs. Each tab has four screw holes. Simply install the screws through the holes into the inverter's cabinet. Do this for all four of the mounting tabs. You might find it's a little easier if you have the inverter overhang the edge of a table. That way there's more room for your hands and the screwdriver. Now let's decide where we want the inverter to go. I wanted it on the wall right here near my existing circuit breaker panel and evenly spaced between the circuit breaker and another piece of equipment. I installed one screw to hold the inverter in place while I marked the other screw locations. A speed clamp is great as an extra set of hands to hold the unit in position. You can also use it to make very small adjustments for leveling the unit. Once leveled, I could mark inside the tabs with a pencil where I would drill the pilot holes to install the screws. Since the inverter is already supported by that one screw, it makes it easy to move to make space to drill the other pilot holes for the screws. After drilling the holes, I put in the right hand two screws. I moved the inverter out of the way so that I'd have room to install the final screw. Then I could hang the inverter up on the wall on all four screws. I again checked for level made any necessary adjustments, and then tightened down all four mounting screws. And that's all there is for mounting the inverter to the wall. Now onto installing the generator input box and the circuit breaker interlock kit. So on my breaker panel here, I actually already had an input a um, little bit different style. So I've removed that and that originally went into right here. So there's already a knockout and a spacer to hold the box. So we'll just reuse that. The generator input box is held shut by one screw. If you just loosen the screw, then you can slide the entire cover right off. Next is to remove the plug where your conduit is going to go. On mine, this is the bottom right. I put the box in place right over the conduit connector and then mounted it in place with wood screws. Next, I added a conduit nut. This just goes on the end of the conduit and it secures the box and the conduit together. I just threaded it in by hand and then tightened it down with a conduit nut wrench. Next comes choosing a breaker and wiring size, keeping in mind local electrical code. In this case, I'm gonna be using a 30 amp breaker. It's a double pole, so it does 240 volts. This is where the conductors go in and then it hooks and pushes in on the breaker panel. And usually use a 10 gauge wire with a 30 amp breaker. So I've got some 10 gauge wire that will fish through to the outlet. Uh, two hots, a neutral, and a ground. Before removing the cover to the circuit breaker panel, remove any sources of power. Typically that just means turning off the main breaker. And if possible, also turn off the upstream power that feeds the panel. With the power disconnected, it's time to remove the breaker panel cover. There's already quite a few wires in here, so let's use a graphic to make it more clear. The red and black hot wires go to the breaker. 
The white neutral wire goes to the neutral bus, and the green or copper ground wire goes to the ground bus. Since I just have such a short distance to go, I just uh, pushed the wires through from the breaker panel into the generator input box. Now, if you have a long distance of conduit between the breaker panel and the box, what you would typically do is tape all four wires together and then pull them through the conduit with a fish tape. It's going to go to the neutral bus. and the ground is going to go to the ground bus. The two hot wires need to be stripped to length to go into the circuit breaker. Insert the conductor into the circuit breaker and tighten down the screw to hold it in place. Repeat this for the other conductor. To install the breaker, this style hooks on the outside edge, then swings to the inside and gets pushed securely in place. Now for the white neutral wire, the neutral bus is right here. It's a little hard to see, so I gotta really get close in there. I don't have a good way to film that. So I'll just do that. Here, I'm tightening the white neutral wire into the neutral bus. I ran the copper wire to the grounding bus and tightened it down with the screw. Inside the generator input box, I cut the ground wire to length. The ground wire goes to the grounding lug where it's secured by tightening down the screw. Now to usually get the wires in here I want like a little extra so that I can kind of just loop it up nice in there and have it go in the back but not too much extra. Uh, the white conductor looks like it's already about the right length. So I'll just cut the others uh, to match that. The conductors then need to be stripped to length to go into the back of the socket. Now it's just a matter of matching the colored wires to the colored connections on the socket. White, black, red. Insert the wire. and tighten down the screw. Repeat this, inserting and tightening down the red wire and the black wire. Lastly, the socket needs to be grounded. I took the green wire, inserted it under the grounding lug in the box and tightened down the screw. To install the cover, tuck away any extra wire, hook the top of the cover on the top of the box, and slide the cover behind the screw. Tighten down the screw to hold the cover in place. We're now complete with the wiring and installing the generator input box. Next, we'll install the interlock kit. The interlock is a mechanical device so that only one circuit breaker or another can be on at the same time. Included here are two different interlock kits which cover a wide range of popular electric panels. The exact size and shape of the interlock depends on your brand and style of panel. Even if yours looks slightly different, they all install the same. Line up the interlock plates with the main breaker and generator input breaker. 
Make sure it can slide completely up or down, preventing or allowing either breaker to be turned on or off. Once positioned correctly, mark the holes on the breaker panel cover with a pencil or marker. Remove the panel cover and place it over a piece of scrap wood. The interlock kit includes the correct size drill bit to drill the holes. I like to use an automatic punch to mark the location and give the drill bit a place to start. Drill the holes. File off the burrs on the back of the holes. Place the interlock components on the panel cover and insert the screws. Place the nuts on the back. Tighten down the screws with a screwdriver and nut driver. The back plate should be solidly mounted down, while the front plate can easily slide up and down. You may be required to secure the input breaker with an additional fastener to prevent the breaker from being accidentally removed later. One way to do this is with the breaker retaining strap included with the interlock kit. Wrap this around the breaker and the one across from it to secure the breaker in place and attach the warning sticker. Now we can put the cover back in place on the breaker panel and reinstall the screws that hold it in place. So now with the cover back in place and our interlock down, the generator input can be on. And only if it's off can we turn on the main panel. The interlock kit comes with a number of safety stickers, such as labeling the generator input breaker and giving directions on how to use the interlock. Make sure to put all these stickers in place. And with the interlock fully installed, the main power can be turned back on. To connect the inverter, insert the cord into the inlet box, twist it to the right, and then lock down the weatherproof collar. Take the other end of the cord and insert it into the NEMA 1450 socket on the bottom of the inverter. Now let's install the hook for the car cable. This is two parts. The first part is the hook itself, and then the other part is the holster for the pistol grip. So the first thing I want to do is just decide where I want this to go. So to do that, I'm going to hang the cord on it and just make sure I got room for where I want the cord to go. Uh, somewhere about, about there, I think looks pretty good. I marked the holes with a pencil and then drilled the pilot holes for the screws. I'm gonna put in this bottom screw first because that'll hold it in place while I do the top screws. The other four screws go through the holster, through the hook, and into the wall. So now we can hang it up right here, have the end go right into the connector here, stick straight out, 
If you like that, great. Otherwise, if you prefer, no reason you can't just have it hang there either. And then the cable that goes to the car can go on anytime. Push in all the way and then twist the collar to lock. So now that we have everything hooked up, the next thing to do is plug in an electric car and test it out. And we will do that on the next video in this series. Until next time, stay charged up.